Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to another episode of Nerd Up this week. Got Ace and Gray. Yes. And I'm your host, Jesse Kimball. Got a two-man cast once again, but hey, do you need more? Two-man power trip. Power trip? <laughs> we are arrogant. We are the so mega, arrogant. The mega powers. The mega powers. Everything's wrestling, Jesse. Everything's oh. wrestling. And I didn't get that joke. Uh, so the mega powers were Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. And then the two-man power trip was when Stone Cold Steve Austin and Triple H teamed up. That lasted a whole, like, week. Like, I literally think they teamed up one night and then it just got dropped. Oh, well. All right, so some very obscure wrestling trivia for... Uh... It's the four biggest names in the history of wrestling, arguably. Well, yeah, but like in, in a one-week thing. Who are your top five most known wrestlers, Jesse? That's I'd... what this show should be. <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's go down into this list. Let's. If, okay, <laughs> some Tuesday that we need to just fill a show. <laughs> Asa embarrasses Jesse about wrestling. <laughs> I can hear Dalton now just like, oh, let me be on. Oh, let me be on. I know I quit the Tuesday shows, but let me be on. (laughs) And he couldn't even, he couldn't be bothered to make it tonight. (laughs) Um, All right. So Disney Plus pre-orders are open now. You can get in on the Founders Circle starting November. So you can go ahead and buy your monthly membership or your yearly membership. It's seven bucks or 70 bucks. Uh, And if you do that, you get a seven day free trial starting November 12th. So you get Mm. seven days for free. Uh, you cannot yet. I would have signed up for this honestly, uh, but you cannot yet sign up for the bundle, uh, I which you're is the bundle. I, mm, I thought I not, was too because <laughs> it's not the ad-free Hulu. Yeah, but and I, that offends you. I started getting billed for Hulu and like, or for I started getting billed for Spotify rather because my credit card like that deal I guess expired uh, okay. that I had told you about where. Like, yeah. yeah, my credit card was automatically, they were reimbursing me for a, a Spotify subscription. So now mm-hmm. I'm paying full price for that and full price for Hulu. And that deal where you can combine the two is over. So now I'm just sitting here in regret land. Like, <laughs> you know, ads aren't that bad. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, hmm. We'll no, see. We'll no. see what happens no. when it actually comes out. Uh, but like right now, like I am, you know, if frugal me is a little regretful. <laughs> I'm sure the first time that I switch to it and I get like, I start, I want to binge watch a show. And you see, you see the same cologne ad for the third time in a row. Then I'll be like, all right, nope. I remember this back to ad free. We go, I'll pay the extra $20 a month. I'm fine with it. You're uh, a crazy person. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, what, what I have is a, what what you call a, a spending problem. <laughs> I have money problem, responsibility <laughs> issues. I, um, I went full irresponsible spend monster today. By the way, did you? Uh, I bought a. Uh, did you buy that super fancy CRT monitor or whatever? No, God, no. That would have <laughs> been just real bad. Uh, no, I just about drained my savings on a. Uh, I, Okay, guys, finish my savings. Sentence. Finish the sentence. <laughs> my savings aren't near that high. Uh, on a uh, a new graphics card. Okay. They had uh, the, the new Radeon 5700 XTs uh, mm-hmm. have been out for a little while now. <clears throat> One I've been eyeing up. There was an insanely good deal today. So I was like, mm, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So, and guys, Yes, that just about drained my savings account. Yes, I am a 30-year-old man, and that $400 graphics card just about wiped me. Oh, after this move, that w- I would not be able to afford it. <laughs> that whole that statistic of like 30-some-odd percent, or no, it's, uh, it's disgustingly higher. It's like 60% of Americans would know what would happen if they had a sudden $400 expense pop up. Because <laughs> they just don't have it. Like, hi, I'm part of that now. My yeah. tax return is officially gone because of this move. My like basically a four hundred dollar expense comes up. Uh, I have a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Can I put this expense on there? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> if no, then screwed. <laughs> Are you gonna do what you've been doing and sell your old graphics card to like Steven or someone? Uh, yeah, I'll see if anybody wants to buy it. I mean, it's a four eighty, so it's not a uh, particularly high end graphics card. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it basically it was AMD's budget run. It was the best budget run card you could get uh, when I bought it four years ago, I think. 
Uh, so I mean, it's still. So you're about due for a new one anyway. Like yeah. you're about ready for an upgrade. I, I mean, like that's been the bottleneck on my PC for a while now. Uh, the was the graphics card. card, which I mean, it's and I say that like I haven't been able like, and that's the reason I haven't like bit on this graphics card sooner because mm-hmm. it's been out for now like four or five months, mm-hmm. uh, and the reviews on it have been pretty spectacular, minus like some heating and cooling issues, but I can deal with that. Um. But yeah, no, it's it's like I haven't jumped on it sooner because it's like I can still play games on you know high settings at the frame rate that I want. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's not it's not been a big deal, but but you I, couldn't play on Max. I could not play on Max. That is correct. And I'm thinking about trying to get into 1440p gaming, uh, like for certain games anyway. Single player games just in, like it, it's high resolution. Okay. High resolution. It's better than 1080p. Not quite 4K. Just do 4K. Uh, but then I can't do the frame rate that I want. Then just do both. <laughs> That's absurdly expensive. I'm not, all I'm hearing is wang. Yeah, well, you know. Um, so anyway, on to, on the actual like back to the actual news here. Uh, so yeah, that, that is this is the Disney is this Disney Plus thing? Is that the one where you can pay for a year, or was that just like a special D twenty three deal? You can still you can pay for a year even when it comes out. Okay, really? Uh, yeah, like, like, okay. I, I honestly. A... The only thing, and I and I don't know about like the seven day trial. I know you get for sure, mm-hmm. uh, and it says you'll be one of the first to access. So I guess maybe they're assuming like a massive influx on release day, and if you had pre ordered, you definitely get to go ahead and start streaming day one. Yeah. If you don't have it pre ordered, maybe like you have to wait because they're you know servers could crash stuff like that. But they've got that special server there for people that pre ordered. I'm real curious to see. Like that's a really good idea, uh, but I am very curious to see how it holds up. It's because just only because like I don't know why, and this is unfair on my part. I admit that like I am not giving them the credit they probably deserve, but I just I I get a weird Nintendo vibe. Like Nintendo is like sure internet that's a thing, whatever in 2014. <laughs> like they they they've just they said in 2019 fad. they are still waiting for this fa- this whole internet fad to end, and I don't know why, but I just I kind of get that vibe from Disney, and I know I shouldn't. Like I'm totally aware of that, but I'm just wondering if they are if they are going to be surprised at the number of people, especially at this price point, that it's going to appeal to day one. That aren't people that aren't going to pre-order it. They don't understand. Like they probably don't even know that it's a thing. Mm-hmm. But when the marketing really kind of starts to hit, and they realize, oh, I get all of this for seven dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I will put that on and put my kid in front of like. Oh, all right. This is this is amazing. And honestly, like with the, uh, I'm, cu- I'm just curious how if they understand just like the how magnitude of how it could be. Yeah, no, because I I fully expect this to be a catastrophe on day one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of want to jump in on day one, be, like on the off chance that it works, that it works, and I can start watching the Mandalorian. Yeah, because that's supposed to be on day one available mm-hmm. to view. Uh, I just I don't think it will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it's going to be a, a catastrophe for the first like two weeks while they're trying to get everything up and running, and it's nah, like that's just what's going to happen. And at the same time, Disney's one of the biggest companies in the world, and it, I would I, I honestly would be shocked if it didn't work. But I wouldn't be. I don't know. No, it's see, weird, I'm, it's I'm like, opposite. I would be shocked if it did work. I would be shocked if it did work, if it did work. But it's like it was. It's one of those things where it wouldn't like. I guess when I say shocked, like I don't, I don't think I would be shocked. See, it's one I'm of those, like, yeah, they could, they could put like ridiculous amounts of thing behind it, but I would definitely not be shocked if it if failed either, because yeah, like I could see them putting, you know, trillions of dollars behind this because they can. They yeah, sure. Oh, okay, maybe not trillions. I could see them putting <laughs> billions of dollars behind this because mm-hmm. they can. Uh, they just, I mean, throw it like they've got Star Wars coming this year. That'll recoup whatever they put into it. Right. They've already had Avengers. <laughs> they've had five. What five movies that have cracked a billion? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just this year? Just this year. Monsters. And they're going to have... Because Star Wars is hitting this year. It's, that, that's going to beat a billion. It's Star Wars. It's the, And it's the last in a trilogy. Right. Like, it's... And it, yeah, it's not a side shoot or anything like that. It's it's Star Wars Episode Nine. Yeah. That's going to crack a billion for sure. Opening night. Uh, right. So, yeah, I, I, I absolutely could see this being a catastrophe. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, if it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Just You'd be pleasantly surprised. I'd be, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not optimistic about it. That's the better way to put it. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised either way. I'm not optimistic that it's gonna work. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess that's how I am. Is like I could see it going either way. 
Like yeah. I, I really could. Like it's it's that thing of no, yeah, it's Disney. Of course it'll work. Or and it's Disney. Do they know how many people are going to be in on this? Right. And maybe that's that's a lot of the but, reason for the pre-orders. Because if they get a whole bunch of people signing up for these pre-orders, they can know like they can kind of what to expect on that first day. Because mm-hmm. if they, you know, it, it, and it really comes down to those estimations. They're like, okay, well, if one out of, you know, maybe one in 50 of our potential users are going to pre-order, I, then they know what to scale for. But at the same time, like, I don't, have they been marketing this a lot? Yes. Have they? Okay, because yes. I have not seen anything about Google. The only time I ever hear about Google Plus are like news stories. Disney Plus? Is that no, what I say? Google Plus? Yes. Yeah, Google Plus. No, <laughs> not Google Plus. Uh, <laughs> we ain't Pokemon, heard nothing about Google Pokemon Plus. Pokemon Go Plus Plus. Um, <laughs> we will never hear about Google Plus again. No, we won't. <laughs> um, Disney Plus. The only time I hear about it is when I hear like a news story. Mm. I don't, I'm not, like I see ads for Stadia well, see, all the, the time. And the thing is like you and I don't subscribe to cable. Uh, uh, yeah, but I've, I, the, between, but I get between the ads on Hulu the ads on YouTube, the ads on uh, just general browser, uh, even like the weekend that I was at my parents, like house sitting. I watched a lot of cable, a lot of satellite. And I have not seen a single ad for Disney+. Plus. I'm tripping over ads for Stadia. I mean, and granted, those are mostly on YouTube where it's also a Google company. Right. And I really wish there was a button of just like, hey, I pre-ordered. I own this product. <laughs> Don't advertise to me. Man, I Stop selling when you've sold, man. Like. This is how I can tell. Like I, I just use YouTube differently than everybody else. Ad I haven't blocker. seen an ad on YouTube in yeah years. <laughs> yeah, you use ad blockers. It's fine. <laughs> like it's not like it's a big well, it's I know, corporate like, secret. I just but... I don't. I never use YouTube on mobile. Yeah. Uh, see, and I do it like on my lunch break. That's typically what I go through and get caught up on various other than like the hour long plus videos. Certain channels that I subscribe to put out. Yeah, yeah, it's extremely rare for me to watch YouTube on my phone. I'll knock out some like binging with Babish or Funhouse or Game Grumps, something like that. What do I like binging with Babish? It's just so soothing. I've actually had to stop watching him at lunch because <laughs> it's like I've eaten and he's very like his voice and the background music. It's all very soothing. Mm-hmm. So it's just like ah, oh, you're not putting me in the mood to go back to work. Nah, that's, it's nap time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, back to this. So yeah, Disney Plus. Uh, you can pre-order now, which is like. I still the idea of pre-ordering a streaming service to me is bonkers, but if you want to get signed up now, uh, by all means, it's available now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do it, and like I said, at the very least, you get that seven-day trial. Uh, like I said, I don't know if that's going to be available if you know, if, like for everybody else that signs up on that day. But if you do sign up early, seven-day free trial. Again, the, uh, the the bundle deal. If you're wanting to get it with Hulu Plus and uh, Hulu, you will not be able to get that until November twelfth. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not doing pre-orders in that bundle. So yeah, whatever, whatever you want to do, that information that's yours. Do what you will. Uh, also, it might you know help you if you to, about like if you're on the fence about that Disney Plus. I don't know why this would sway you, but uh, they did announce that the uh, OG X Men and Spider Man cartoons from the '90s mm-hmm. uh, are both going to be on Disney Plus. Which which I don't know how that wouldn't sway you, <laughs> Mr. Okay. Kimball. I know it's 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 one of those things. Like if if the content that has already been announced hasn't swayed them, I don't know how oh, yeah, this would it, be the tipping point. That's fair. Uh, because but no, because I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely gonna binge watch those shows again. Even the super racist scene with Wolverine when he's in Japan. Oh yeah, they're attacking our village. <laughs> Oh, that'll get you fired off SNL. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that uh, <laughs> that show is going to be on there. And yes, folks, that clip existed in the 90s because the 90s were a very different time. That's crazy to think. Right. Uh, yeah. That's it's 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 because I'm really, really excited, though, for that to binge watch X-Men again because I haven't been able to do it since it was on Netflix back in like 2011. I remember watching the Spider-Man one. And being really confused because I guess I do not remember them spending like six seasons in space. That was like he was in space for so long. And I'm like, well, I don't remember any of this. That was actually a separate series. It wasn't unlimited. It wasn't unlimited yet because that's what led into unlimited too. Yeah, because like yeah, and unlimited like that's when he went to space with Venom and Carnage. Mm -hmm. Unless Uh, maybe maybe Netflix had its like the the labeling off. Eh, could have been because too. I remember getting to Unlimited and remembering, okay, no, this is more symbiote space stuff. But like even just 
the base Spider-Man. Like pretty early in the fr- in the series, I was like, "This is a lot of space." I don't remember them spending much time in space at all. Maybe it just felt like a lot of. Sp- it might have been like three episodes, oh, and I just enough. felt like I was. It was. <laughs> why is he still in space? That's that, not New York. That's a show that I actually like. Am excited to binge watch again because I have legitimately not watched that since it aired in the nineties. The uh, re- reading the cracked article about the insane restrictions put on it mm. makes me curious to go back and rewatch it. We talked about this a few months, like probably years, a couple years ago at this point, but it was like, he can't throw punches. Uh, no one can get thrown through windows, no guns. Like it's all of these really weirdly specific like rules that the network put on the Spider-Man cartoon. Oh, that's kind of crazy. Cause yeah. I remember there being a lot of punches, Yeah, but maybe there wasn't. Oh God. <laughs> no, it was like mostly, it was mostly him like webbing people up and, all right. Uh, you yeah, know, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that now. Uh, Tom Welling of Smallville, Clark Kent way back in the day, speaking of another show from a while back now, is returning uh, as Clark Kent in Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, the the new CW-verse crossover. They're apparently going to be bringing back uh, quite a few actors that have played previous versions of characters, or played characters in previous series Mm -hmm. which honestly that's something the cw verse has been doing for a while like they have a lot of cameo appearances of previous versions i say pre not previous versions uh previous actors that have played that role like have appeared in like supergirl every actress that has played supergirl in live action has been in the supergirl tv series some in like larger parts than others yeah it's it's really cool and then you had obviously uh flash uh, had um oh god what's his name um the Grant, fl- Grant Gustin no not that he's the actual like he is the Flash right um no the the old school Flash uh like the the nineties live action series Flash what I is that know. dude's name I don't know he was at Cape Comic Con a few years ago uh oh I got yeah, I gotta remember that guy's name uh, we're not accepting Collins at this time thank you though. <laughs> no it, it's uh uh you you talk amongst yourself i'm gonna fix that phone yeah i don't know who jesse's talking about or really what point he was really driving at although i did find it's not the article i was looking for but yeah uh spider-man was not allowed to they had a set of rules stating that spider-man could not throw punches toss anyone through glass put children in jeopardy or have anyone threatened by fire or even say the word kill so instead of getting murdered, Uncle Ben moves to Canada. Uh, the grunge era cops also carried around future bla- like future blast, futuristic blasters, not actual guns. Huh. And yeah, there was one scene in which when Spider-Man was fighting Spot, uh, he propelled his fist through one of the portals and hit him. But that was like the only time, and that's how they had to get away with it. John Wesley Ship. By the way, who's who was referring to? Oh, I didn't think you were talking about one of the main characters of the show. Yeah, I thought you were talking. I thought you were talking about like the just like he had a guest spot in one episode because I almost said like his dad. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> I guess I was not referring to a cameo. Well, I mean, it technically, I guess was a cameo role, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, John Wesley Ship. Yeah, his oh, okay. dad. That makes was, more sense. Because I was also trying. In addition to playing his dad, he played another Flash uh, in a season that maybe you haven't seen yet. Because he, because I thought that was pretty early in the series. No, where he's like the old school with the metal hat. And yes. Like, because that was what big teaser at the end of one of the seasons is like the the clanging sound coming through. Yep. Nonsense. Yeah. No, I think I'm only like one season behind. Okay. I saw cool. the Dav- Davos, Davros, Davros, super smart dude that uh, had the floaty chair. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yes yeah. yeah you're saw, one. You're one was, season behind. Yeah, that was the I last think. season I saw. Yeah. I'm also one season behind still. It's probably coming to Netflix soon. It is already on Netflix. Remember, it, uh, CW's got that deal. I it didn't hits. realize the season had, had ended. Like, the current season had ended. Oh, yeah. No, it ended a, a while back. Now they are about to do season or the next season. Well, then I'm all about <laughs> to be two seasons behind. Uh, <laughs> head writer slash producer John Semper explained that the writers were told to always be careful that, in quotes, when Spider-Man lands on the roof, he doesn't harm any pigeons. End quotes. Good Lord. So... Because this is a WB show. This wasn't Fox, right? Fox Kids. Was Fox Kids? Mm-hmm. Oh, gross. That Well, that's the, the screenshots. That's the in the watermark. Yeah, because, well, I mean, I know it was syndicated, and it ended up being on Fox Kids at some point. Because I, I want to say I remember watching it on WB as a kid. But maybe it wasn't. No, uh, it was on Fox. Batman was WB. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously. <laughs> More on Batman later. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so the Boondocks is getting a reboot in HBO Max. That old uh, Adult Swim cartoon. Mm-hmm. That uh, I actually kind of want to go back and, and watch now. It's just going to make me sad. Because uh, we need them back. But we're getting them back. But Yeah, on HBO Max. <laughs> uh, I only ever watched like two episodes of the Boondocks. Really? Yeah. Uh, d- I'm, I was a different person in high school. That's fair. And this did not appeal to high school, Jesse. I understand that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get, th- I get that. Uh, now, current day, Jesse, even like towards the end of college, Jesse, likely would love the boondocks. <laughs> uh, so he really be- would. There's an, there is an episode where Martin Luther King Jr. didn't die. I have seen clips he w- from that. He was put into a coma when he was shot. Uh, and then he wakes up. Yeah, cool. I, I, I've seen clips from that. Uh, no, I, I need, I need to watch it. Uh, cause I'm sure at this point that I would like it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also be- just like, like, yes, it is. It is a, it, it has, it's a show with a really good message and it, and it's a powerful show, but damn, if it's not really friggin' funny sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and so hopefully, I don't know. I'll probably somehow end up with HBO max. Maybe hopefully they'll put the old stuff on there too. And I can actually watch it. I think it's on Hulu though. Now that I'm thinking about it. It might be. I'm not sure. Uh, cause I know they adult swim had to deal with Hulu for a while. I'll look into it because um, I, I never even think about it like now until I saw like this news article. I was like, man, I should watch that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeffrey Wright uh, is in talks to be Gordon, James Gordon in yep. Batman, uh, Matt Reeves, Batman movie. Yes. Which, I, don't, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen him in anything. Uh, he's in he's the uh, he's in Westworld. Yes. He's got a bunch of other stuff that he's going to that I will end up seeing. He's in Wes Anderson's next movie. He's in the next James Bond movie. Uh, there's a couple other movies that he's already finished, it sounds like, um, that are coming out pretty soon. And he is great in season one of Westworld. I haven't seen season two yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know they're run, or they're gearing up for season three now. Uh, I do really want to see season two. I thought he was great in Westworld. I don't think and that he has... Uh, I, I don't think he's the right type of person for Gordon. And no, I don't mean... <laughs> Skin color. You, f- you phrased that real uh, unfortunately. I, I did phrase that pretty unfortunately. That's almost as bad as my uh, recommendation on the pre-show, <laughs> which if you go to patreon.com slash podzilla1985, for $1, you can hear me just kind of stumble into something that I did not mean to. Yep, and that one's also funny. Yeah, $1 <laughs> gets you all the pre-shows. Every one of them we've ever done. There's even a special message for new subscribers at the end of uh, this last free show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun time. You can hear us talk a whole lot more about Jeffrey Wright. Either way, yeah, no, I, I just don't think he's got uh, the, the right. I think the, the, <laughs> the words Jeffrey I used on Wright? the. Ha, the words I used on the pre show, like, I don't think he's got the, the gruff, like, in your face, uh, like, meanness that I, I feel like James Gordon needs. I mean, and. I, I get that. Like, there are definitely aspects to Gordon that he is a very no-nonsense, like, especially when it comes to um, Harvey, whatever his, the oh, Bullock. Yeah, Har- Bullock. Yeah, Harvey uh, Bullock. When it comes to Bullock or, you know, a, a, when he's interacting with criminals. But at the same time, like, look at any of the scenes, and maybe I'm basing it too much on the animated series, uh, or even in the comics, like, it, when he's dealing with Barbara, or yeah no like the scene this it's one of my favorite things whenever they decide to go with this canon um because it's kind of malleable but like when in batman begins especially gary oldman him interacting with young bruce wayne who has just gone through this like absolute worst day of his life worst day of anyone's life Mm. and just the like he is also very very like warm in because at his heart gordon is a nice dude he's He's a a good good man. man yeah yeah and so I feel like, and granted, I, I, like I said, I haven't seen him in anything. I don't, he might be a total softy. The dude looks like he is also a super nice guy. Jeffrey Wright, like, he just looks like the nicest guy. Like, yeah. oh, he looks like a sweetheart. But, I, but you know, as an actor, I feel like he would have that ability to kind of oh, he absolutely flip the could switch do. And, turn, and then turn into just like this, you know, no-nonsense. And see, that's where I don't know if he has the, he has the chops for it. I mean, he, I mean, he very well could. He very well might. You just haven't seen I, it. I just, I have not seen it personally. And it's, I, I absolutely <laughs> think that he could do, like, yeah, that, that kind, like, that, that gentle side of Gordon. Like, he's, mm-hmm. he's got that on lock. He's, like, he'll be all right. Two, turns out season two of Westworld, he is the biggest just D-bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, definitely a possibility, but I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, <laughs> I, 
I still even have like uh, access to HBO Go. Like, there's no excuse for me not to have seen Westworld season two, other than I just haven't. <laughs> all right, this next portion of the podcast brought to you by our friends at Villainous Grounds in Perryville, Missouri. Stop by there for all of your comic book needs. Plus, they have delicious coffee. Uh, so there's a Birds of Prey series. Uh, it, it's a I don't know if it's supposed to be like a one shot or or no, it's definitely not. It's just supposed to be a one shot or a mini series or a new ongoing for DC, but they've decided to move that to Black Label, uh, and they're going to hold on to it until the movie actually premieres. And since we don't have a release date yet for the Birds of Prey movie, we're not sure when that's going to be, but uh, it will be written by Brian Azzarello and uh, Emanuela Lupacino. 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 Uh, Brian Azzarello is the one that gave us Bat Dong in the uh, the Black Label series. Mm-hmm. So... I'm uh, I'm interested to see what he's what he's gonna do with this one. It I, I I got nothing really other than that. It looks cool. I'm a little bummed that it's gonna get uh pushed pushed back until like to coincide with the movie, which doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I mean, I get it because you know you want the people because more people are gonna go see the movie that are gonna buy the comic book. Yeah. So if people go out and see the movie and think, hey, that was great, I would like more of that. Oh well, hey. Promote and then that's also all the promotional material there is just wrapped into the movie of like, hey, if you like the movie, come check out the you know come come go into a comic book store, go check you know go and actually like if you seek it out and now there's a it's a brand new it's a number one you don't have to worry about jumping into Birds of Prey seventeen. True. So I mean I get it I don't know how effective it'll be because I I basically I I don't know I would almost think it would be better to have uh like especially if it's gonna be three issues. Uh, oh, like is it Batman only going to be three ones? I don't know. Okay, we, I was going to say, because yeah. like, I was assuming this was going to be an ongoing. If I it's did, not going to be an ongoing, then yeah, just take everything I just said. And actually, no, even if it is even if it is only three issues, just be like, again, it's the, hey, you like this story. Here's a, not in a continuation, but if you like these characters, these characters, it's not a huge time investment. It's not a huge money investment. You can grab these three issues and, hey, maybe something happens in those three issues that there's another character that you're more curious about. And then, because that... And then that's what Lord I was, knows I know that can happen in comic books. Yeah, uh, and that, that's what I was talking about. Oh, Gabby, um, the uh, <laughs> in in birds with with the uh, what I was talking about before. We don't know if it was going to be beforehand a new ongoing, a mini series, a one shot. We I had we had no idea what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it got pushed to Black Label. If they go like what they did with Batman Damned, which was just three issues, then uh, if they do that, I feel like it would be a good idea to have like issue three maybe released like right around the time that birds of prey hits yeah but then you have the people that if they do see the movie and like oh i want to get back into it oh i can't find a number one anywhere uh that yeah that's fair whereas now you have uh, the or number even one. have like the trade like, yeah release on the day of the movie like mm-hmm. that that could probably be a better idea am i crazy in thinking that the birds of prey movie is supposed to be rated r uh not that i had heard but I don't mm. think they had announced a. a yeah, I don't know if it's been officially it. announced yet. But I thought I, I thought they said because that would make that also makes sense with it getting moved to black label. If that it's, would if, if they are appealing to a older, more mature audience. But as far as I know, like we don't have an official like anything on the uh, the ESRB. Yes, Birds of Prey is expected to be the first theatrically released R-rated DCEU film. Huh. I thought Suicide Squad was R-rated. Nope. Huh. It should have been unrated because it was. Terrible. It was rated brown for <laughs> duty. Poopy. <laughs> uh, all right, James Tenney in the fourth, and Tony Daniel are taking over Batman from Tom King. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, okay, here's the deal. I'm sorry, but this is my time now. James Tenney in the fourth. I could turn off your mic. You can, and that's, <laughs> you think that's going to stop me from talking. Uh, yeah, but people wouldn't hear you. That's fine. Jesse would. I'm just, that's fine. Because then you would try to talk, and I'm just going over you. <laughs> Outshining you like the bat signal shines. So, James Tini the Fourth has, not even quickly, but I've come to realize, is my favorite comic book writer. Just, T is. Huh. Uh, the, detect- the rebirth detective run. run of Detective Comics was some of the best storytelling in any medium I've ever seen. I loved it. I don't know what about it, like, really tugs on my heartstrings but it hit me in the perfect way there were multiple times i sent jesse and dalton like hey have you read this issue yet yes okay well here's this page i just read and now i'm in tears (laughs) 
or hey, when you get to this certain page, you'll know. Come find me. There were a few of those. Because I'll be in tears. And I was. Uh, it ended amazingly. Um, I haven't kept up with the detective run since they, uh, since they left it. I picked it back up briefly when uh, Tomasi, Tomasai, uh, I'm not sure how to say his name, but when he took over for Detective, I have like the first arc, I think. I think it's Tomasi. Um, but so I love that. Tinian the Fourth is also the guy who did, he's the writer behind Batman Ninja Turtles crossover. Mm-hmm. The first one was, again, amazing. They tur- that The movie that just came out, if you've only seen it, you haven't read the comics, that's the comic it's based off of. It's one of the better DC animated things to come out in the last few months. Like, which is pretty solid stretch, which is saying something. Because they, they they put out a, a quite a few movies, yeah, uh, like uh, per year. And up until relatively recently, they've all been pretty incredible quality. Yeah, starting at about like whenever they started the uh, the shared u- animated universe, I yeah. think is when we started seeing a pretty like a, a decline, a, a, a decline in quality before like the the common universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, like those were some just like knocking it out of the park. We kept talking about how, like, yeah, DC could not get a live action movie for anything, but they are killing it with those animated features. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Tinny in the fourth also, and so he's doing the th- he's doing the, he's in the middle of the th- not in the middle. Uh, issue six comes out relatively soon of the third one. I haven't started on it yet, just because any of those mini series, I like to get all of the issues and then just read it in As, one go. Yeah. Um. So I'm exci- I'm really really excited to get into that one, uh, and then also he just put out the uh, something is killing the children, which I talked about. If not this past nerd up that we were nerd up before that, uh, it's his new horror horror ongoing, and it's amazing. Like I the first issue, I'm still mad that I have to wait for issue two, because that is a story I very much want progressed, and I and I want more of now. So for him, worst part about getting a really good issue one. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling it. Um, but so for now, someone who has handled arguably two of my favorite versions of Batman to get the, the, the soul, the actual Batman run, the mainline series, like he's not, this isn't an ensemble book. It's not a team book. He is getting Batman Mm -hmm. makes me so happy. I am so excited to see what he does with this character. He he did an interview where, uh, about what he's going to do with Gotham as a whole. He's going, uh, he's already talked with, um, Tomasi about establishing like what they want to do because right now the Tom King run with Batman Gotham has been very uh contained yeah there really hasn't been a whole lot of even though there's been some universe shattering events the sole Batman run hasn't really been affected by any of that no, the DC just in general. They talked about a long time ago now that they wanted to keep their books separate more, from like, the events yeah. and all of the outside world yes. forming uh, stuff. And they have really like kept to that to a point of almost a fault. Yeah. Uh, because there you have like especially whenever they were doing Dark Knight's Metal. Yeah. Whenever they had like just this huge like earth shatteringly legitimately ridiculous universe changing event. Yeah. Uh, the only books that that changed were Justice League books. Yeah. Did not impact even a tiny fraction, like an iota, there was the maybe, main Batman run. There right? was maybe one crossover issue in each of the books. Because I remember there was a Red Death Flash crossover issue. And even those were not like, they were almost non-canon. Yeah, it, it was It was so far removed of just like, hey, this is not, don't worry about it, it's fine. Right. It's cool though, look at the design, right? It's neat. real neat. Go buy these books. <laughs> um, but and no, so. super pretty. I like the idea that he's going to be working with the other, bat, the other like core Batman writer. Uh, to to really make Gotham feel different and special, and giving what is going to end up happening at the end of at eighty five with the city of Bane wrapping up, you know he said so Bane has spent all this time in the Batcave. He has pretty much infiltrated every tool Batman has right now. So he's got to start from scratch. He's he's got to you know it's going to be a lot of gadgets that he's having to come up with kind of on the fly. I'm I'm so excited for it. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna be great. Like I'm I'm also really excited for it. Tony Daniels' art is also yeah. incredible. Like dude's just and I'm not, rocking I'm, it. I'm not trying to like minimize his accomplishments. No, but, like, I, I just but Tinian is the Tin, like Tinian's my guy. Like he's no, I the, hear you, I hear you. I just and I'm adding to yeah, it. Like Tony, Daniel. I appreciate, I appreciate because yeah, it's, he's I'm, real good. I'm real excited to see what they come up with. Yeah, no, I I am as well. And uh, they also talked about possibly in this run. Uh, the return of Dick Grayson as Nightwing. Good. Because uh, as of right now, apparently in the Nightwing book, he is still going by Rick. He's still trying to decide who he wants to be. 
and a bunch of like police officers and other randos have been like taking donning the mantle of Nightwing, while Rick has been uh, out getting dates and stuff. Mm-hmm. Honestly, wouldn't be mad if they kept the Rick moniker, uh, because Dick is silly in 2019. Yes. Yeah. 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 Dick made sense back in the creation of the character. Mm-hmm. No longer does. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anybody under the age of 60 whose name is Richard that goes by Dick. Yeah. Uh, not a soul. And really, I only know one person by the name of Richard that goes by Dick. <laughs> uh, and he retired from the, my place of occupation fairly <laughs> recently. So, yeah, I, I so we are getting uh, one way or the other. Uh, Grayson is going to be Nightwing again sometime in this run. And, and which would be which is great news. And honestly, like you and I have been very staunch defenders of Tom King's Batman run. Yes. Up until recently. Yes. I uh, so I went up to Villainous Grounds to get a box for moving for comics, mm-hmm. and uh, I just picked up the books that had come out this week while I was up there. Fair. Batman was one of them. So I read the, this this newest issue that came out this past Wednesday, and uh, I gotta say, for there only being like six issues left. Feels like a lot of filler. Oh, yeah, it's a that's bummer. That's not what you want to hear. Yeah, I, I read. I was really hoping you were going to start saying, "Boy, he's he's starting to stick that landing." <laughs> and it's just like, and it's like, okay, these are the two issues that are setting up the thing that I really want to see. But I didn't really need these two issues to really build that hype because I was already ready for it to happen. Yeah. So when you when you read it, we'll we'll reconfirm. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll talk about because overall, I still think the Tom King run has been a positive. Yes, uh, uh, it was general. really just yeah the this last. Basically, this last arc yeah. uh, has been just like it's uh, it's been on a steady decline. Yeah, because it's really felt filler and if, heavy. And for me, if nothing else, Bane has been put in a position of prominence that I have felt he has always deserved. Oh, agreed. So. Uh, we we talked before so many times about Bane and how he has been uh, mistreated. Some, yes, so <laughs> harshly mistreated. Somehow relegated to a C list Batman villain mm-hmm. and, and mindless sometimes, brute. Yeah, or mindless brute, or occasionally a good guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. Moving on from there, uh, on to uh, some Marvel news. We got new 2099 one-shots announced. Uh, Chip Zdarsky and uh, Marco Castillo will be working on Doom 2099. Apparently, uh, Doctor Doom is going to play a big role in this uh, 2099 event. So so is it a whole event, or is it just these one-shots? It's one a shots? Spider-Man event okay. with a bunch of one-shots that go with it. Kind of like Absolute Carnage. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, except those have been a lot of not-so-much one-shots, but... Uh, stories that only exist to tie into that event. Okay. And that's what these are going to be. I doubt they go any further, but it wouldn't be the first time that something has come up in an event, especially a Spider-Man event, that has gone on to get its own ongoing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, who knows? Um, We got Venom 2099. Jody Hauser and Francesco Mobili will be working on that one. Uh, Ghost Rider by uh, Ed Brisson and Damian Cuchiro. And uh, then we've got we got the cover art for the Omega book because with these events there's almost always an Alpha and an Omega, mm-hmm. and that just looks really neat. Doom 2099 just looks cool. Uh, we didn't really get to see. Oh, like, and Ghost Rider 2099 looks real cool. Looks straight up like a Terminator. I was gonna say now is this Ghost Rider terrestrial or would you say he's more of a cosmic? Uh, that's actually the Punisher 2099 is cosmic Ghost Rider. Okay, I'm pretty sure. If I remember right, I did see the cover of Doom though, and I like how they use the the O's to yeah. make the mask, like the eyes in the mask. That's, that's some old school niceness right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, I, I like that quite a bit. And uh, yeah, the the Ghost Rider cover, like I, he just looks cool. Uh, so we we'll, we don't know a whole lot about what that event's going to be. Uh, we did get confirmation that Nick Spencer is going to be writing the Spidey twenty ninety nine. I don't know why people thought differently. Because he's writing the Amazing Spider-Man book. This is an Amazing Spider-Man storyline. Mm-hmm. I know uh, Shannon Young in particular will be happy that uh, they're going to do a new ongoing for Spidey 2099. So Miguel O'Hara will return. Is that spinning off of the event? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I mean, obviously, he's going to play a huge role in the event. So there's going to be that. Uh, and I think I, I sent Shannon a couple of pictures of like Ghost Rider 2099. Uh, I don't know if I sent him Punisher or Ghost Rider, one of the two. Anyway, we got uh, Dawn of X-Men. We got a trailer for that. Back in July, they, we got all the titles. We got a bunch of the uh, the rosters for it. But we didn't have you know the artwork, the covers, and stuff like that. So that's, that's what this trailer was. Uh, I don't. We never talked about the rosters. I don't remember why. Uh, I don't know if maybe I just didn't see it or not. But regardless, I got the rosters here, mm-hmm. and I'm going to talk about them. 
Uh, I know one in particular Shannon's going to be a little happy about. I keep referencing Shannon because for the first time he's going to hear this because he's in the room. (laughs) 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 Um, So X-Men, the actual X-Men book we've known for a while. Jonathan Hickman's going to be on that with uh, Lionel Francis Yu for the art. The team is real interesting. Um, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Wolverine, Rachel Summers, Cable, Havoc, Vulcan, and Chris Summers. You might notice something about that roster. I have a question. Yeah. Isn't Chris Summers Havoc? No. No, okay. Chris Summers is um, Cyclops' dad. Uh, Oh, Space Pirate? Yeah, the Space Pirate. Okay. Corsair of the... So this is just Summers Family. (laughs) Summers Family... Plus Wolverine. Get that out. That is a side book. Get that out of here. That's the main X-Men book. No, it's not. The main X-Men book is going to be the Summers Family plus Wolverine. Now on E. Like, cool. (laughs) Yeah, Summers Family and the dude trying to break it up. (laughs) I don't want to read that book. I, I saw that team and I was and I actually had the same like thought process like Keeping why is with this the Kardashians the, the mainline X Men book like don't get me wrong I'm gonna read it it's probably gonna be great because I do like all the summers but <laughs> I just like that's the main X Men book most okay so mostly it's like I never cared about Havoc I haven't read any of the stories that he's like truly important uh, he's just always kind of a my mind Havoc is still a C list X Men villain. And I understand that that's not true anymore. Uh, also, Cable is time travel. Get out of here with that garbage. Uh, no, thank you. You are not welcome here. In fairness, Cable hasn't time traveled in a while. Uh, cool. All that's right. not how I know Cable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. He's uh, still from the future. Even, and then Rachel Summers is an alternate timeline daughter. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm aware of her because she's pops up in she's popped up in the in either red or blue or both. I'm sure. Yeah, both. Uh, uh, I'm confused why Cable is on there because there were events that happened in red or blue or both that left him very dead. But given Cyclops is part of this book, and I guess Professor X <laughs> is heavily featured in House and Powers, that just doesn't matter. So uh, also I, recently found out why. Oh, finally! Finally, I need it. Then I'll uh, start reading. I'll probably yeah. might read some of that tonight if I can get my packing done. Yeah, like you I need, need to, to get get caught up on that hox pox. Uh, no, there's that is a. There's no Kitty Pride, there's no Colossus, there's no Nightcrawler, mm. there's no Gambit, nope. Rogue. Like the X Men, no matter what this roster was, I probably wasn't going to be happy. Like I will admit that because there are so many fantastic X Men characters, but for them to try to go like, no, like, are, yeah, no, we decided kind of we're going to stick with the whole screw Fantastic Four. <laughs> like this is the first family of Marvel now. The Summers family. <laughs> yeah, like that's the vibe I'm getting. And no, again, no thank you. I love I, like Jean and Jean Cyclops Wolverine. Absolutely. If you were going to announce that there was an X Men book and those three weren't on it, I'd have been like, really? Are you kidding? Those three all just came back from the dead. Like, yeah. got to put those in a book together. Exactly. Like, yes, no. And also, like, when I think X Men, and I, I give Shannon a lot of crap, and, and like, I, I do the bit of I hate Cyclops. I don't hate Cyclops at all. I just don't think he's he just definitely wasn't my favorite character. But, like, he deserves to be on an X-Men team. His dad, though? Like, <laughs> granted, his dad, like, the only thing I know him from is X-Men Blue in what started the uh, the Venomverse mm. storyline that I thought kind of was a really weak point in X-Men Blue. But... Eh. It's one of those things, like, I don't... I, I doubt that this is going to be... And, oh, no, I know. I know for certain. This will not be the the, the roster for the mainline X-Men book for its duration. Oh, yeah. No, uh, sure. it, That's it's, a revolving door. It always is. Oh, yeah. Uh, I imagine we're going to get an arc out of the Summers family, and we're going to get some... There's going to be some stuff coming out of that that we're going to find out about. Didn't they do something like that with the, with the Avengers? Where uh, they had, like, four set people, but then, like, every story three. arc... Uh, well, yeah, no, they ended up being four because they added uh, Black Panther to it. And then, like, every story arc, they kind of cycled in a handful yes. of other characters. Yep. Because, uh, yeah, they, they ended up adding... Well, it ended up being five because they added Black Panther and She-Hulk to the mm-hmm. constant roster. Okay. With the, the big three, uh, Cap, Thor, and Cap, Iron and Iron Man. So, yeah, uh, I, I absolutely could see this changing around. Uh, we got the Marauders. Uh, that's going to be Jerry Duggan and uh, Matteo Lali. Uh, Kitty Pride, Bobby Drake, Storm, Emma Frost, Bishop, and Pyro. 
So that's 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 actually a pretty. That's solid an interesting. Team. That's a really I'll, interesting team. I don't care for Emma Frost uh, remotely, uh, and I don't really care about. Uh, oh, who was the Pyro? Probably no, no. I've Bishop? always actually really liked in Bishop. I oh, okay. never, I never really cared for Bishop. It's more of that time travel nonsense, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Uh, we've got. It's like my mutant power is being really good with technology. No, you just know what all the technology is because you're from <laughs> a thousand years in the future. No, his mutant power is absorbing energy. All that. Yeah, it's the anyway. same thing. Anyway, uh, we got Excalibur. Uh, that's going to be the the next one. Teeny Howard and Marcus Toe is working on that. Um, Captain Britain, uh, Betsy Braddock, formerly Psylocke, mm-hmm. uh, back in her own body now. Is she going back to Captain Britain? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a reason why. I read. Well, I read. The, um, I read the book that she like got her body back. Yeah. And I never. I guess I don't know that much about Psylocke because I never realized that she wasn't in her. Own old body, body? Yeah. yeah so it's like she's she looks so different i was like does she <laughs> like her hair's different i guess but okay let's yeah no she's <laughs> so she's gonna she's gonna reclaim the the captain britain moniker mm-hmm. uh her whenever she was introduced it was her twin brother was captain britain uh, stuff um comic books comic books uh either way she is captain britain again mm-hmm. uh we also got richter rogue gambit jubilee and apocalypse this is the one that i thought what? shannon would find very interesting uh yeah i, yeah, I gotta start i got okay yeah you I'm need to get myself homework because none of that <laughs> just makes <laughs> sure the last time okay the last thing i saw apocalypse is he was prisoner by x jesus uh with kitty pride and random human senator dude yeah that gets resolved uh yeah i stopped reading before yeah, that because that I, was not I a good book that. uh but the rest of the, like i'm actually kind of interested in this why, roster why are jubilee and- on the same team. <laughs> you, you and I can talk about it later. <laughs> uh, you, you and I can talk about that later. If you want to know why, or at least my theories uh, and opinions, email me. Oh, I thought you were getting ready to like, we're going to record this conversation and throw it on the Patreon tier. No. Uh, email me at what at podzilla1985.com. <laughs> um, all right. So we've also got the new mutants. Uh, it'll be Jonathan Hickman for the first arc, and then it's switching over to Ed Brisson. Uh, and uh, Rod Rios on art. That one's going to have uh, Magic, Wolfsbane, Karma, Sunspot, Cypher, Mirage, Mondo, and Chamber. It's going to be a, a whole roster, basically, of what could be described as C-list X-Men plus Magic. Yeah. But I'm a huge fan. I love Wolfsbane. Cham- She's awesome. Chamber's a B. Is is he of all the ones that you could have said is a B list? You went with Chamber. I like Chamber. <laughs> I think he's cool. <laughs> and maybe it's just because he's one of the only ones that I recognize. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that's fair. Like uh, they used him fairly recently in either Uncanny or Blue or Gold. Uh, yeah, Chamber they used in Uncanny for sure. Okay. Uh, and I think he was in Gold as well. Yeah, maybe. I don't... Uh, but I mean, you know, Cipher. Do I? Uh, he's the one that can translate any language. Oh, he's the one that got addicted to uh, yes. the internet because he was trying to like decode it. And he, he was succeeding and the... it drove him insane. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a fun storyline. Uh, and then Sunspot, and, you know, he's... that's that's <sighs> Sure. All right. Uh, either way, this this book seems really interesting, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to focus on a lot more of the... Uh, I mean, it's, it's new mutants, mm-hmm. so they're going to have probably new mutants. This is just one of the central, uh, I guess, rosters for it. We've got uh, X Force, Benjamin Percy, and Joshua Kassara. Um, be good, be good. <laughs> You're be not going to like this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sage, Kid Omega, Jean Grey, Wolverine, Colossus, Black Tom, Domino, and Beast. I like a lot of those names. I actually dig this roster. Uh, go ahead and take Kid Omega and launch him into the sun. Oh, I like Quentin Quire mostly. Quentin Quire, okay. Quentin Quire is the, it's the same thing as Emma Frost. You're you do too good of a job at making them super unlikable. You know that's fair. I uh... so you know what? Guess what happens? I don't like them. West Coast Avengers made me like Quentin Quire a lot. The new one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I I read through that, and I that made me like uh Quentin Quire a whole lot. So I'm okay with Kid Omega now. Uh, Sage, whatever. Yeah, but, I, Sage, I literally don't know. But honestly, like Jean Grey, Wolverine, Colossus, Domino, and Beast on an X Force team. 
Because X Force is traditionally X Force is traditionally the murder team. Yeah. And Beast and Jean Jean Grey makes me very curious because I feel like they're going to try to make her the like, hey, X Force is always the murder team. Let's try not to. And what I would much prefer is uh, Phoenix Jean Grey. Yeah. Like without Phoenix though. Like keep that stuff very bottled away in the white hot room. Uh, and just decide like yeah, I'm no. I'm okay if Phoenix never comes back ever again. I'm going to just go inside your brain and turn it off. Because <laughs> that's something she can do and has yeah, done. Yeah, and just like oh, there's, we're surrounded by this army, and all of a sudden they all just crumple to the ground. Just yo, yeah. did you stun them? What? <laughs> Uh yeah, we'll go with that. Let's go on. <laughs> no, yeah, like those those four like in an X Force book just make me really happy though. And I mean Sage is cool. Kid Omega is cool. Um, Remind Dal- I know I know who Sage is. I know I jo- I was joking when I said I'd never heard of Sage, but um, explain to Dalton. Uh, who she Sage was, is. she was the prophetic one. Uh, like she she tells prophecies. She sees the future. She was in. Uh, then where was she during Civil War too? Probably, Balance out that inhuman. Probably dead. It's probably it's ugh. <laughs> moving on. Uh yeah. So Fallen Angels is the last book. This one I'm actually really interested in. I know you won't be because of the first name that I mentioned. Oh, here we go. Uh but yeah, Fallen Angels, sweet, Brian sweet Hill and uh I have no idea how to say this name. There's only one vowel in it and it's six letters long. Um All right, chance the rapper. I'm I'm just gonna go with uh Zyman. Zyman Kadransky. Uh, the name is S Z Y M O N. Zyman. That, that's that's probably that's, what I would go. That's with. yeah. That's that's my closest guess. So we got uh, or is it where it's Cable. An H. Oh, I'm sorry. What were those words you just said out loud? Uh, <laughs> the first name was gonna make you angry. <laughs> you take angsty teenager and time travel and mash it into one stupid little <laughs> one stupid character mm-hmm. uh teen cable and this is actually i'm a little bummed because i'm also not a huge fan of teen cable but i want to read this book because the other two members x23 and uh psylocke say, okay. the actual not betsy Wait. braddock Quanon. So was Psylocke a separate character before Betsy? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't. I. It they turns out I don't. bodies, and then Quanon died. So the one that was in Betsy's original di- body died. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, apparently, I don't know jack about Psylocke. No, that's okay. It's comic books. Her her entire <laughs> story. Basically, like they introduced her in this other book. They liked her a whole lot. Wanted to put her in the X Men. So they completely like retconned her and like just it. Look, and then halfway through the character development process, <laughs> Jim Lee like effed off over to create image and like just like here you go, look at this dumpster fire. <laughs> so they did what they could. <laughs> uh right. and now we so, have so Psylocke. Uh, so it's so it's it's Teenage Dirtbag, <laughs> Psylocke, X twenty three. I swear to god if you say Gabby's in this. That's book. it. Oh, it's just those three? Just those three. So I'm interested. And especially On the one hand, X twenty three. On the other hand, Teen Cable. Cable. Yep. Who you didn't even read the event that I hate him for. <laughs> Accurate. Because I just like I everything get, about like I under- everything about the idea of Teen Cable upsets me. I understand that I have my own weird little triggers when it comes to, to media. I get that. I, I understand that it's not the fault of the creators. It's on me. I recognize this flaw. However, like most good Americans, I refuse to do anything about it, and I don't have any. I don't have any desire to grow. Um, so, I yeah. hate that all of these books have at least like two or three members of the team that I do genuinely care about. Oh, like that was an accident. And it, yeah, no, I mean I get it. Yeah, it's all right. It's, it's like be... those, all those waves. Like if Dalton were here, he would bring up the waves of like Marvel toys. Yeah, exactly. The build of figures. Right, and it's like, yeah, of course you're gonna put Dazzler in because you have to sell a leg for Apocalypse or whatever. But yeah, it's just like, yeah, you're not. They're not gonna put uh, Sunspot, Teen Cable, Quentin Choir, Emma Frost. Like they're not gonna just do that for me. They're not just gonna put all those one <laughs> characters. Like put them all in their own little and story. and just call it like Asa will never read this. Right. Like, <laughs> the, like people will love it, and that's great. And I will not take away from anyone who enjoys that book. <laughs> Good on you. But keep your peanut butter out of my chocolate. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I'm a little bummed that Teen Cable is on the book because I need X23 in my life. And more importantly, there's no Gabby on any of these lists. And <sighs> that's a problem. So here's the deal. Uh, it's not Tom Taylor. So I don't know how much I try. Like this X23 run, uh, at least what's on Marvel Unlimited so far, has been really mm. good. I, I really enjoyed yeah, the she did great X23. Um, Mariko Tamaki, I think is her name. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I want to say uh, that's who took I'm bad the... about keeping up with who is writing what books, unless it's like a major name. Fair. Um, and I, I really like the X-23 Gabby dynamic. The first arc, I think, just with the X-Assassins mm -hmm. is what I just got done reading. And it was like, okay, that's pretty touching. And I, and I dig that. And the, the humor's there. But not many people are going to be able to nail that like they should. No. So I'm okay with people that I don't know, you know, not playing with like leave gabby in the toy box until someone knows knows what they're doing <laughs> i i just i just need more gabby in my life all right this last portion is brought to you by our friends at press start to join you can find all of the content including their social media links at ps2jshow.com uh all right so we got we do not have much time left and i got places to be so i'm gonna i'm gonna speed run a little bit of this uh last of us part two is gonna be at the state of play tomorrow and a possible release date leak for that, uh, February 28th, 2020. I've seen a lot of people also uh, speculate that it could be on Valentine's Day. Because so, that's also a Friday. There you go. So, yeah, no, it, it's, it, there's definitely some, uh, some solid... It makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. we will, we will likely get it tomorrow. Yep. Uh, we also have the Inside Xbox tomorrow. Uh, nothing huge as of right now We're getting planned for that. More of... I actually got that list pulled up because uh, I was curious. Uh, Outer Worlds will be heavily featured... And then we've got a look at the upcoming single-player sci-fi RPG, The Outer Worlds, the latest on Project X Cloud, which anything on X Cloud? Then please just right. give me information. An exclusive interview with John Barenthal on Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. A scoop on tickets for XO19 coming out of London in November. Uh, Grape Shot Games' Atlas is coming to Xbox. Uh, and episode will also feature Daisy, Hitman 2, After Party, Code Vein, Felix the Reaper, Children of Morta, and the next round of Xbox Game Pass titles. Neat. So nothing super groundbreaking, it sounds like, unless they have like some pretty big surprises up their sleeve. Um, but I mean, it, it'll be worth... I'm, I'm interested if only for the Xbox Game Pass titles, because that service has been awesome. They just added Bloodstained, or they're about to add Bloodstained, one of the two. I think it dropped today. Today? Sweet. Yeah. Uh... So either way, yeah, don't, I, we'll we'll uh, we'll let but, you know if anything big happens. But likely the biggest news is going to be coming out of the the state of play. Yep, mostly because Last of Us Part Two is probably the one of the most hyped, looked forward to games of 2020. And I think that's where we're getting the announcement, the official official announcement of one of the other stories. Oh, uh, fair enough. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. WB Montreal. I'm yep. assuming. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we've got a bunch of like really cryptic tweets from them about a new game. First time they've talked in a we've long gotten time. Two. So Saturday was the eighth. Three, one got deleted. Well, th that but that wasn't by them. Uh, okay. Uh, so well, I know Scott Snyder's got deleted. Yep. I thought that. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So Saturday was the eight was Batman Day. It was the 80th anniversary of Batman. It included um the, that's when they announced that James Tinian was taking over for ba the Batman comic. Mm -hmm. That's where they formally announced and introduced the Batman stuff coming to Fortnite. Uh, and then they also. So and then uh, this wasn't announced, but WB Montreal, who has that Twitter has not been active for four years. September third, twenty eighteen, is the last time they've tweeted anything. They tweeted of they retweeted a video Wait, of you say September twenty eighteen. 15. 15. Okay. Yeah, I was about no. to say, uh, buddy. <laughs> no, yeah. September 2015. Uh, they retweeted a video of a building lit up as like the Batman, mm -hmm. and it did random flashes, like single frames of these mysterious images. Then today, they just posted all four of those images in a video. Yep. So it's just, and with uh, a, like something the bat. And then Scott Snyder yesterday or Saturday retweeted the, the WB Montreal tweet. The one of the building, the, 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 yeah, the changing the one that And the one that had the flashing images yep. on it and said, uh, you know, stay tuned or something like that. And then hashtag beware the court of owls. Yeah. And then he very immediately deleted that tweet. Yeah, he did, but a lot of people got screenshots, and we got to see it. Yep, there's receipts, because nothing's <laughs> forever gone on the internet. Nope. Uh, and so, Unless yeah. I tweet it and delete it, no one will ever <laughs> see it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, uh, I think we're going to get the official announcement of, which one of the images, like, none of the images outright look like owls. Nope. Especially, like, the, the pictures of the t-shirts that they were wearing, you know, years ago. Uh, those all look different, and the last image actually looks like a demon. So I'm wondering if it's going to be both Court of Owls and 
League, League of Assassins. The, the the yeah the the League of Shadows, League of Assassins, the Demon's Head. Yep, because yeah that yeah Demon's Head was very much what that looks like. So uh, we'll maybe some tease to to some to some uh, yeah. Raish Raz Al Ghul, however you decide you want to say it. I'm here for it. I know that Batman Origins gets a bad rap as being the weakest of the Batman ones because it wasn't done by Rocksteady. It wasn't done like uh, didn't have Mark Hamill or Kevin Conroy. It's kind of seen as the st- the you know the black sheep of the family. Yeah. I think they're fine games. The reason I have the problem I have with it is because it was advertised as a, Hey, look, black mask, early Batman career. Like he's got all these assassins after him. Cool. And then like 20 minutes into the story, they're like, just Joker. kidding. It's another Joker story. Like, ah, that, that bummed me out a lot, but yep. it was a really good game on its own. So I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah. Once I heard the, my, the Joker bit, I, I was out for Batman origins. No my, interest. Uh, the, 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 um, death stroke, boss fight is fantastic it's a million times better than the arkham knight one hmm. because Fair it's enough. not in a stupid tank um <laughs> my big question though is how does this affect rocksteady's project does this confirm that we're not getting a rockstar or a rocksteady batman game if they could this be just could this be justice league if they like, end up if wb montreal is tweeting out about like them working on a batman game then yes this would confirm that rocksteady is not working on a batman game i would hope so but <laughs> uh i i would say absolutely all right we gotta we gotta move past this though because we got also i'm pretty sure that means the rocksteady game is not going to be on this generation of consoles almost certainly not at this point yeah. because yeah we've, we're we are just over next a year, year away from the next gen mm-hmm. so yeah. uh all right <clears throat> The, the last little bit we got uh, in Pokemon news, Sir Fetched was the, the new Pokemon showed up, looks like. Uh, Farfetched is getting a title exclusive evolution. Yes. God, I hate that. It's only in Sword, even though he's holding a sword and a shield. Yep. Yep. I'm not, but I'm the not sword's gonna get, a leak. I'm not going to keep getting mad about it. Oh, yeah. the, the and, it, and the shield is the snapped off top of a leak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's neat. And it's 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 a neat looking character. He's he's really cool. Like, and I like the memes that have come out of him, especially. But, eh, whatever. I'm just I'm I'm bitter at this point about Pokemon charging me sixty dollars per version of the game now. Mm-hmm. Like it was slightly justifiable when it was forty, slightly sixty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Google Play Pass got announced today. Uh, th- this is direct response to the Apple Arcade. Uh, five bucks a month. With 350 apps available to it, mostly games, some for productivity. Some of those games include Stardew Valley, Limbo, Knights of the Old Republic, Terraria. I mean, just solid games right there. Yeah, that's uh, re- that's really good. You can also get a year for twenty four dollars, two dollars a month. Yeah. Um, all build at once. I'm thinking about it, depending on how much money I actually have after this move, uh, because I don't play mobile games a whole lot. But like, that's a solid lineup and. And the portal, like, they showed off Portal, which is a little misleading because it's Portal Bridge Builder. Yeah. Which I bought a long time ago because I, I weirdly like those bridge building games a whole lot. Mm-hmm. The Portal Bridge Building game is super fun mm-hmm. because it's Bridge Builder with portals. <laughs> like, it was cool. So, yeah, that's 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 definitely worth that money. Five bucks a month for a whole bunch of games and applications. For as long as we've heard about Apple Arcade, I'm genuinely surprised we have not heard more about this. Same. Like, because I, because clearly this isn't a thing they just threw together in the week since the Apple press conference. No. Like this has been in the works for a very long time. It's just, I guess all of their focus has been on Stadia that they're not really. And that's all the marketing any. release. So I guess they probably just saw this as the opportune time because it's like, well, no, everybody's talking about Apple Arcade now. Mm-hmm. So. And now there's all these people like, oh, but I don't have iOS, so I can't get it. Maybe I should start looking into it. Oh, Google has a thing. Oh, okay. Never mind. We out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about Frogger. All right, who cares about Frogger? Uh, Do you want to play Sayonara Wild Hearts, though? And the uh, the Exit the Gungeon. That's oh, yeah. kind of neat. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they, they both got their stuff. But uh, also, Google, uh, Google Play Pass, uh, unlike Apple Arcade, it's not going to be a rotating library. They're apparently, or at least from what I could find, they're just straight adding more apps every month. They're not removing it. It's not, any. yeah. So that's that's we'll really. We'll see nice. how long that sticks, but right. that that is a very good choice for them to at least start with. Yes. Uh, all right, and that's actually going to do it for our show. We did get some. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't Hunter. I know you're disappointed. You didn't get this week in Borderlands news. Uh, don't worry, Hype Train will have that tomorrow because we are doing the Hype Train tomorrow. We are going to be talking about Borderlands, and we're going to be talking about the newest announcement for content in 
Borderlands. So make sure you check out that show. I'm also willing to bet that there's going to be something coming out of either the state of play or the inside Xbox that I'm going to be super excited about. Almost certainly. All right. So that's going to do it for us, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.